This is Scott from California. When I'm not hiking at national parks, I'm stacking Benjamins. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and my crazy holiday calendar says it's National Tell Me a Story Day. So that means on today's show, we're going to tell you some stories about insurance. How do you score a better deal? What are some of the areas agents look at that you should know about? How do you ensure that Joe and OG pay for your next trip to the Sizzler? Wait, what, what, what? We're talking about that one? Okay, gotcha. Here to help us, we welcome from the Shannon Harvey Agency, Shannon Harvey. Plus, from Afford Anything, Paula Pant. And rounding out our team from this here podcast, it's OG. But that's not all, of course. We'll still have a story from a caller on the Bloom Hotline and learn about a new European bank coming to the U.S. of A. From N26, we welcome Nick Kopp. And now, because Fridays wouldn't be the same without bad dad jokes, here's Joe Salciha. I don't have any bad dad jokes, but I did, OG, recently write a song about tortillas. Okay. And how does the song go? Well, it wasn't really a song. It was more of a rap. But anyway, but I don't have any bad dad jokes. Hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> Across the card table from me, that voice you hear is the one and only other guy, or as we call him, OG. Fresh off my oldest 11th birthday yesterday. Quite the extravaganza. It's what it's, it's your 11th birthday? It's my oldest ah, 11th birthday. Also with us today from Afford Anything, the person that just got that tortilla joke, Paula Pant. It's totally true. It actually took me until the middle of OG's introduction to get that tortilla joke. I saw you smile. You were, you were not wrong about that. I saw you <laughs> smile partway through. I'm like, three, two, one. Here it goes. <laughs> and guess what, Paula? We got a special guest with us today. Oh, cool. Who's that? Yes. Uh, making the property values higher today from, I believe, from Greenville, South Carolina area. It's our brand new friend, Shannon Harvey. Shannon, how are you, man? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Welcome to the Stacky Benjamin Show. I have no idea why you Thank agreed you. to come, but we're so happy that you're here. So tell everybody a little bit about you and your practice before we kick this show off. Sure. I help people protect everything that matters most to them. And I often mention I help them avoid financial disaster. And that's why I wrote a book called How to Avoid Financial Disaster. Good name. And uh, that's what I love talking about. Excellent. We're going to talk about financial disasters. We're going to talk about insurance, talk about your relationship with your insurance agent. So we've got the guy here to help us through that. So thanks for joining us, Shannon. Hey, guess what, Paula? Not only are we going to do that, we might save people money on their insurance, but we're also going to save them money on their financial products. What do you think about that? I can't say I have any thoughts about that, Joe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but you know what I do have thoughts about? Chocolate. About, about chocolate. This show is not brought to you by chocolate, but it is brought to you by Magnify Money, where people save an average of $450 on their financial products. Why would you just go into your brick and mortar bank and say, what do you got when it's as easy as going to stackybedjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money to look for the best checking accounts, savings accounts, consolidation loans, or if you pay your credit cards off every month like you should? play the reward point game. And uh, Nick Clements over there says, if you are getting less than 2% back, you're leaving money on the table. We're also happy that Slack is supporting Stacking Benjamins. Paula, you use Slack? I do not use Slack. Well, you're a slacker. Ooh, I'm a slacker (laughs) on downloading Slack. (laughs) That's right. You got to start doing it because it's a collaboration hub that lets you organize your team's work into channels where everyone's included. We use it here at Stacky Benjamins. Relevant information is all in one place and new team members can easily get up to speed. Learn more at slack.com. We're going to learn more about some headlines, guys. So let's get this party started, huh? Hello, darlings. And now it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins headlines. Our first headline comes to us from the Miami Herald. Oh, gee, you'd like to be in Miami right now. No, it's pretty nice here, but Miami is uh, a lot nicer than Texas, yes. I agree. <laughs> this is from the, from the Associated Press. A new auto insurance company in... <laughs> or a hurricane in my hand. Anything with an umbrella, right? And fruit. A new auto insurance company in Rhode Island 
It turns out, according to this piece, is rewarding drivers with cheaper rates based off how they drive. The catch is this. Policyholders have to allow High Road Assurance Company to track them in a cell phone app. The Providence Journal reports executives of the company award drivers based on how safely they drive using four criteria, including braking and speed. After each trip, a score and projected discounts pop up on the app, showing the impact of the driver's safety during that specific drive on the insurance rate. <laughs> Obviously, they're not the only ones. You think this is Sorry, groundbreaking? I'm laughing because I, I am not going to download this app. <laughs> they're gonna, I'll be in the red numbers. They're going to be like, and based on your driving, your insurance is going up for the next trip. And You'd pass. Keep them guessing. <laughs> right, right. Part of the pool, baby. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. So, Paula, you know, does this reek of kind of big brother to you? It seems like we get we, we get better rates now if we let the insurance companies track us. Do you think that's a bad thing or a good thing? Well, first of all, I think this is kind of old news. I've been hearing about this for, what, 10 years or so, at least? I mean, I've been hearing about this for as long as I've been alive or something like that. But what do you mean? To answer your question... What do you mean? Because this is as of... Uh, this piece is as of April 8th of this year. Yeah, but I think that there are car insurance companies that have been doing things like this for at least a decade. I know of, actually in Texas, I have a friend who did this many, many, many years ago. I think it was through Progressive or one of those types of car companies. They had something like this as well. So yeah, it's, it's been going on forever. So do you mind that insurance companies track you? That's the big question. No, because it's it's opt in. It would be one thing if they were tracking people who did not opt in, but you're the one who voluntarily signs up for it, so why not? Oh, gee, how about you? A uh, little big brotherism. You don't. You said that you're not uh, somebody way, that way way too big brothery. But I'm with Paula in that you have to opt into it. But that just brings up another question: Is that just now kind of a self fulfilling prophecy that only the really good drivers are going to be opting into this? Well, I guess that wouldn't be too bad, right? Because if you're an insurance company, you'd then just be insuring a whole bunch of really good drivers, I guess. Right. And Shannon, I come to you last because you're the expert in this area. Yeah, we're wanted, just making it up. I wanted to get their what's opinion the, before the, you trump what's everybody. The real answer. Yeah. Well, Paul is right. This has been around for a while. All of your major carriers have been doing this for several years. It used to be a plug-in, a device you actually put in your car. But nowadays, it seems like everybody's going toward the smartphone device. And I agree with OG. It's It, it depends if, if you're a good driver. If you're kind of boring and you're only driving during those hours when there's not a lot of traffic and it's pretty safe to be out on the roads, then this is probably going to benefit you. But if you're one of those drivers who's out late, you're you're slowing down a lot more than you should be, like trying to get under the speed limit when you see a cop or you just aren't paying attention and you have to do some sudden braking a lot of the times – then it's, it's not going to help your rates. Uh, in the long run, they're going to be able to, I think some of them are already doing it. They're dinging your rates. If you're doing some, of, if you have display some of the bad behavior uh, when it comes to how a, a carrier looks at a, a driver and the way they drive a car. So it, it depends if you're a good driver, it's probably going to benefit yeah. you. I think you can save anywhere from three to 30%. Wow. And uh, you also earn some rewards, kind of like the uh, reward programs you guys were talking about with magnify money. So it's good for those folks, but I agree with OG. If you're doing some things on the road that you'd rather be kept secret, then that's probably going to help you in the long run not to use it. I was going to say, I had a guy ask me one time if I was if I was trying to get us to our destination or if I was trying to qualify. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say both? Does it have to be either or? I know. It's a competition. Always get there as fast as possible. Always. Come on. It's interesting, though. Do you find, Shannon, by the way, on, on this note, before I move on to other types of rewards and other types of discounts that people get, do you find that the biggest impact is with younger drivers, where the difference between a 16-year-old who's a horrible driver is a lot different than a 16-year-old who might have had a little bit better coaching? Do you find that the rates are different when people are young, or is, does it not matter? Oh, yeah, absolutely. From 16 to 25 is when you're going to see the biggest differences in the uh, in the insurance rates for auto insurance. You know, it gets cheaper. You know, I guess, what is it? Your your brain's still developing. If you listen to some of the Joe Rogan podcast, he's talking about the prefrontal cortex or whatever. So until you're 25, your brain's still developing. You're still, you're going to be a higher risk and higher cost to insure. But once you're 25 to 65 for most carriers, that's when you're going to see your cheapest insurance rates. We keep saying one day Doug's prefrontal cortex is going to develop. We keep hoping, like every time that guy has a birthday, like, come on, man. You were going there. I could see, I could just see it in your eye. You can do it. Hey, I want to talk about, you know, this is one way to save money on insurance. Paula, what are some ways that you save money on insurance? 
Uh, well, I buy a bunch of rental properties and then I bundle them all together with my car insurance. <laughs> uh, how do you do that? <laughs> it's a, it's an extremely elaborate strategy. <laughs> right. We, we can't, you got uh, Shannon on the line, so you can't say how, is that the deal? What do you mean? Like, how do I buy rental properties? Or how no, do I no, how do you bundle, bundle them together? together? What do you mean? What do you oh, mean that you bundle I them just, together? I just call my insurance guy and say, hey, we need a policy, but we we need rental properties. We need uh, homeowner's insurance for our primary residence. We need policies on multiple cars. Oh, you've so got a have... discount because you have so many products under one umbrella. Exactly. Gotcha. I didn't know what the heck you were talking about. Oh, gee, gee how about you? How do you score discounts? Well, the biggest discount is by not having the insurance company track me. <laughs> we did a big, um, we did a big backyard project. I mean, it's still kind of ongoing, but I remember calling the insurance people afterward, which I think is also pretty important. If you do something to improve your property, or, or you know, you get a new car or something like that, obviously you want to get some coverage on it. But, uh, but I was really surprised because while I was on the phone with them it dawned on me that we had done some other improvements as well, including getting a new roof. And so I said, well, with all the new stuff that we did, do we also get a little bit of a discount for the new roof? And she said, Oh my gosh, absolutely. Let me put that in the, the, the whole thing ended up costing me 14 bucks a year difference because we had all this new insurable stuff in the backyard, but because we got a discount on the, uh, on the new roof, we were able to save a few bucks on that. But I also don't let my children drive. That's a, that's a big safe. <laughs> Isn't your kid 11? Hey, that- <laughs> that's how you save money. Do not let your 11 year old get into a car accident. Your rates will go sky high. Great yeah. advice. That's great yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah, Sh- Shannon's writing that one down. I got to tell my customers that one. Right? <laughs> Don't let your 11 year old drive. Where'd you hear that? Stacking Benjamins? Hey, how'd you know? When, in uh, all seriousness, you learned something on this podcast. <laughs> right? yeah. But in all seriousness, our community is a golf cart community. You can drive golf carts. There's no rules about uh, how old you have to be. I'll tell you from a liability standpoint, I'm not going to let my 11 or 12 year old drive a golf cart down the roads because I see, I see him run into trees. I see him run into people. I see cars run into them. To answer your question, be a little bit more mindful about risk is how you can save money by, you know, not engaging in those activities, I guess. I was surprised when my kids got discounts on their driving for uh, great grades in school. So I was very surprised when our agent said we could get that. Shannon, what are some other discounts that people often overlook that maybe they should ask their agent about? You guys have hit on some really good ones that, you know, the multiple policy discount, the more policy, more different types of policies you have with the same insurer, the you know, the better your discount there. If you have a teen driver, you mentioned the good student a good student discount, if they're a B average or better, uh, that is one of the biggest discounts a teen driver is going to get. If they've done driver's education training is another discount, they're a huge discount they'll get. Uh, one of the biggest discounts you can get on the auto insurance, though, is if you have great driving behavior and you have loyalty for m- multiple years with the same carrier. And, and that can be anywhere from a 10 to a 35% discount. Wow. So the, lo- the longer you're with the carrier, the longer you go without an at-fault accident, the longer you go without a violation, that's all going to add up for that discount. And one thing OG mentioned, the whole risk thing. If you're paying attention to saving money, growing your nest egg, however you want to look at it, the best thing you can do is protect that nest egg in case you cause an accident or something happens that uh, you never even thought about. And I tell all of our clients, they, if they have a home, if they have a family, they need to have an umbrella policy. I'd say nine out of 10 Americans don't even know about a personal umbrella policy. But if the if the wrong accident happens, whether it's in a car or not, you risk losing everything you have. You don't have to be a millionaire to get sued by uh, sued like one. And you can have a personal umbrella policy for as little as a couple hundred dollars a year. Well, the frustrating thing I see, Shannon, to that point is when I do see umbrella liability policies, I see people get a million dollars. And I often ask, how many people sue for a million dollars now? Like that's, and the difference to, and I know you know this better than I do, but the difference between a million dollar policy and a $2 million policy, which is much more likely is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to do it, let's do it. By the way, a friend of mine lived right next to, have I told you guys this story? Lived right next to a guy, you know how you going down a highway in any major city, this city happens to be Detroit. There's these big billboards on this one billboard. As you drive toward downtown Detroit, it says we sue big. Well, my buddy was telling me that that's his next door neighbor. And his next door neighbor's daughter was learning how to ride her bike for the first time without training wheels. 
and she's wobbling down the sidewalk. And as she gets in front of my buddy's house, he goes, all I could think was, please don't fall in my yard. Please don't fall in my yard. <laughs> Speaking of um, umbrella liability. Yeah, I keep an umbrella in my car just in case. <laughs> but I'm bummed. It is bad dad joke day. Yeah, it is bad. So I've got a question about uh, some discounts for driving. Shannon, maybe you can answer this. Uh, two, really. So firstly, how much does a not at fault accident impact you, right? So you have a claim because it's not, it's nothing you did wrong. It's just police records, all that stuff show that you were not at fault. And then secondly, what about these, uh, you see these kind of around our area anyway. So I assume there are in other places kind of like the defensive driver course. Sometimes they're mandated, you know, if you get really bad, uh, uh tickets and that sort of thing, but I've seen people opt into those and, uh, uh, you know, for that opportunity to save a few bucks on the, uh, on the insurance. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll answer the, the second question first. You asked about the defensive driving, those kind of courses, they can certainly save you, you know, five, 10, 15% on the auto insurance. But most importantly, most carriers will tell you that their, their statistics show that when folks who take those, uh, courses are far less likely to have an accident. So when they when they run the numbers as far as you know getting into an accident that uh, results in a big claim, the folks who are taking those defensive driving courses are far less likely. So it may not pay off for you big time up front on the discount, so to speak, but in the long run, it's going to pay off for you if it's keeping you out of a major accident. Uh, and and the first the first question you asked, I don't recall what was the uh, first question again about not not at fault. Not at fault. Yeah. So. Every, all your carriers now, they're looking for ways to trim on costs. And so a lot of times they're doing that up front by, you know, risk assessing a uh, a driver before they even put a policy in place. So you might not find that uh, a not at fault accident causes you any problem for an existing policy. But if you go changing carriers and switch around, you may find that it's hard for you to get coverage, even if you have two or three accidents that are not your fault, they're still counting against you on, a, on an underwriting standpoint, and you might not be able to get coverage up front. So it might not necessarily affect you with your present carrier. If you're sticking with them, they might not even pull a, a driving record to see uh, how recently you've had a violation uh, if, if, no, if no claim has been filed on your insurance, if it's been filed on someone else's insurance. But if you're shopping around, it could, it could uh, keep you from getting a new policy. Gotcha. Paula, are, are you a good driver? Oh, yeah. Super good driver. Seriously. (laughs) Seriously. I'm like, I'm nervous enough to be cautious without being so nervous that it makes me like dangerous. I don't know. Sounds to me like you drive like four ways on the whole way down the highway. I can already tell (laughs) right, right in the middle lane, 58 miles an hour and a 60. Got her hazard (laughs) lights. Yep. The hazards are on. (laughs) That's the kind of person we like to insure. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Paula, how much banking do you do on your phone? On my phone, I deposit mobile checks. That's the primary thing that I do. And sometimes I check my balance. Company that is coming to America, they've been big in Europe, is called N26. And we heard that they're coming here later in the year. And so for our Friday FinTech segment, I thought we'd talk to the new head of U.S. operations for N26 as they bring more mobile banking to compete against those big boys to the USA. So uh, let's say hello to Nick Kopp coming down to the basement. And coming down the stairs to the basement, today's fintech victim. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to scare him. Nick Nick Kopp from N26 joins us. How are you, man? Good, good, Joe. How are you? Uh, well, Thanks I'm, for having us. Well, I'm so happy you're here. I want to hear the origin story of N26 because you guys have been around Europe for a while, I understand. But when your founders in Europe first created N26, were you looking at the banking industry and you thought there was needs not being met? Were they personally frustrated? What happened? Yeah, so it was in 2013, so a while back by now, um, in Europe. Uh, Max and Valentin, our two founders, they were just personally frustrated with the banking industry as an overall sector. But more importantly, they thought it would be very helpful for actually like moms and dads to sort of control their kids' spending. So what they put down together as an initial idea and where, where the whole story of N26 actually started is with an 
banking app for teenagers where the mom and dads could sort of see what the teenagers spend in real time and, and, and sort of get their kids a little bit familiar with finance, teach them a little bit about you know financial stability and, and, and making sure they learn slowly and steadily how to use uh, money. So they had a mobile app with a card just to realize then later on that the app was so great and Max and Valentin actually really liked to use it themselves um, <laughs> and, and all the parents that we, we had as customers. So uh, from that perspective, we then decided to just open it up for a broader population. I love it. Parents playing with the kids' toys because they like them so much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but in the banking industry, that's really cool. And obviously, in the U.S., as much as Europe, this is a an industry that's ripe for disruption. And now you guys are headed to the U.S. So tell me, what makes N26 different than our bank on the corner? So N26, and, and just maybe to describe it a little bit, it's always best in, in actual like screenshots and to show the app. Right. Uh, but we don't have, I guess we don't have the luxury here, Joe. <laughs> no, it's going to be, it's going to be Nick's story time instead. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so what I can say is we are a mobile bank in Europe and also the solution that we'll have here in the US will be a mobile app where you can basically manage all your daily finances through your app as well as you get a card from um, one of the renowned like MasterCard or Visas of this world where you can go spend in stores. So that's the basic offering that N26 has and what we really stand for and what makes N26 special I think are the following three reasons. I think number one, our mobile app is really simple to use. It is incredible. Uh, I'm at your website, not to cut you off, Nick, I'm at the website right now, n26.com. And it, it is so simple. I mean, just, just looking at the app on the website, it looks incredibly simple. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just like everything's very clean and easy to use. It's just like very important for us that customers just feel at home and, you know, find their way around the app very easily without any friction. So I think that's definitely num something that makes us stand apart. Another thing that I also personally really like about the app is sort of the thought of control. So what we want to do at N26 is give you, the end customer, control of your finances. Then the question comes up, how do you guys actually do that? And what we have in terms of features is really special, I think. At N26, so every time you swipe your card, you make a bank transfer, you get very detailed information on what that sort of tr financial transaction was, and you get it in real time. Oh, so cool. you get a buy a coffee, your phone vibrates, you can instantly see where you bought that coffee, at which merchant, uh, where is it located, how much was the coffee, and that gives you really this like sense of ownership of your own finances versus uh, maybe other players that have some delays and, and less information in their um, transaction history. Makes it harder for hackers too, I would think, or for uh, you know bad people trying to steal your bank information. Yeah, exactly. It is really safe and secure from that perspective because we put you as a customer back in control of your finances. And that way you see, like if someone uses your card somewhere else where it wasn't you, you will see it instantly on your, on your app. Immediately. Awesome. Now, people obviously with banking, we always worry about fees. Uh, what type of fees does N26 charge? Yeah, that's another beautiful thing about our account. We're actually a free app. Oh. So majority um, of our services are completely free if you use them. And if we actually charge for anything, we'll be very transparent about that. So I think what a lot of banks don't get right out there is when you get charged, you're not 100% what for and when. Uh, so our app is, is, again, for majority of the service is completely free. But if we do have to charge, we'll tell you very transparently and honestly, and we're sort of very like upfront about that. And brick and mortar banks have different services, saving, checking, loans, things like that. Is N26 checking only or is it checking and savings? What's included? Yeah, it's currently a checking product uh, with a card in yeah. Europe. The same thing um, will uh, apply here in the U.S. So you'll you'll get a checking account and a card. And then over time, we want to expand it and add many, many more features here for U.S. customers, including savings and other, other products. Got it. Cool. Well, and the free aspect of that, I think, makes it really easy to do that. The direct deposit, I'm assuming super easy to do into my N26 account. Yeah, a few taps on your phone and you're done. Okay, and then uh, uh, you know nobody nobody really writes checks anymore. But if I get a check, if I get paid by a check, how do I get that into my N26 account? Yeah, so we're actually working on a solution for that too. We're looking to bring out at some stage a, a feature where you can just take a picture of that check and it gets instantly deposited into your account. Got it. I, I think I got one of those in the past year. So I don't know, yeah. how, <laughs> I, I don't know how often that, that happens really, but 
it does happen. And if it happens, you want to cash that check, right? So yeah, makes sense. Awesome. And then my last question was around everyone worries about security. Obviously, you're a bank, but talk to me a second about security with N26. Security for us at N26 is extremely important. It's twofold. So what we do on the one side is what I described a little bit before is putting you as a customer of N26 back in control of your finances and also security. So you not only get real-time pushes and things for transactions, but you can also real-time block your cards, adjust spending limits, make sure nobody can use your account or like for, for five minutes, 10 minutes, or even a day. You can really unlock and lock your account and card instantly. So I think oh, that's sweet. Really that is sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that really customers highly appreciate. And then on the flip side, at N26 too, we use the most modern technology with machine learning on like detecting fraudulent transactions, making sure in the background that we also help you make sure you're safe and secure from an N26 side. Awesome. Well, it sounds exciting. You're at an exciting time for the company I know, Nick. Uh, when are you guys rolling out? End of this year, Joe. Awesome. Cool. And is there some place people can go to maybe get on the list, like a waiting list or something? Yeah, we have a waiting list out there. So I'd, I'd be more than excited if people join us, join our little movement that we have started here in the U.S. on n26.com. And it's very easy. You can just tap a button there, put yourself on the wait list, and then you'll, you'll be informed with updates on our account and when we're coming out exactly. And then uh, w- once we're live and ready, you'll definitely hear from us. Awesome. Uh, yep, I see it right here. Uh, nice blue button. And also for people looking for a job, it says you're hiring too. That's exciting for some other people. Yeah, we're definitely hiring. <laughs> um, so if anyone's interested in, in joining a, a small group of people that's very passionate about what they're doing, uh, please feel free to send us uh, your applications. Awesome. Nick Cop. as you guys get more information as, as you move throughout the year with updates, please come back and let us know. Thanks for hanging out with us for a few minutes. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us. Uh, it was nice chatting. Hey there, trivia nerds, and welcome to Uncle Doug's Story Hour. Timely, isn't it? On National Story Day. Actually, the best fiction story series you already know, of course, is the Harry Potter series. But since this podcast, rumor has it, is about money, let's ask you a money question from the best-selling series, shall we? Here's today's trivia question. According to Rubius Hagrid, there are three types of currency in the wizarding world. Galleons, which are gold, sickles, which are silver, and newts, which are bronze. If there are 17 sickles in a galleon, how many newts are in a sickle? I'll be back with the answer in just a moment. This episode of Stacky Benjamins is brought to you by Magnify Money. Let's do what we do every week, guys. Let's head over to Magnify Money and find out what's happened with interest rates because it's super easy. We head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash magnify money. Can you hear me typing? And it immediately pulls up, compare the best offers for. I hover over balance transfers, no. Cash back rewards, no. 0% interest credit cards, no. Low interest credit cards, no. Secure credit cards, no. Checking accounts, yes. Savings accounts, that's what I want to look at. And I click Get Personalized Offers, and immediately we're at 2% still for Poplar Direct. But if you remember from last week, one thing that I love about Magnify Money is the fact that I can see that their fine print score is very low at Poplar Direct. They give it an F and say it's way too complex. Now, the good news is you can deposit as little as you want, only one penny. And if you're not getting any interest right now, which is the case for a lot of people, if they've got money sitting in a 0% account, they're going to make $220 more than they made last year. But Salem 5 Direct looking much better at uh, 1.85% or even Dollar Savings Direct, which is 1.80 and gets an A on their transparency score. See how easy that was? All this stuff, super easy. You can compare, ditch, switch, and save at Magnify Money. Use stackingbenjamins.com forward slash Magnify Money to tell them that we sent you. We're also super excited that Slack is on board supporting Stacky Benjamins because we use Slack. We've been using Slack for a long time. The reason is it's a collaboration hub, if you're not familiar with it, that lets your whole team get organized. Everything 
is in easily searchable channels. So whether it's projects, interests, teams, or by office, all the right people are always in the loop. Relevant information is all in one place, and new team members can easily get up to speed using Slack. Slack where work happens. You'll learn more at slack.com. The big thing for us is it saves us so much time. Give you an example. On Thursdays, we do our Facebook Live, and often Shannon and I will go back and forth about the graphic for Facebook Live, and we can easily do that on Slack. And if we have an old graphic that fits the bill, we have them all saved right on Slack. And so for our team, let me share with you what our different channels are. We have a courses channel, a design channel, a marketing channel, a newsletter channel, a social channel, a trivia channel, and uh, stuff that we're currently working on channel. Plus, there's individual direct message channels with every member of our team. It's that easy. Share files, jump on a video chat together, jump on audio together, whatever it might be. Slack integrates with it all. Slack, where work happens. Learn more at slack.com. That's slack.com. Whoa. I, I refuse to watch any Harry Potter ever. Why? Completely uninformed. Oh, <laughs> yes. Shannon, we're all uninformed. I mean, yes, <laughs> I know. but that, is, that includes the rest of the show, not just this. So uh, welcome to the party. You didn't say I needed a financial calculator. All right. So uh, here's, here's the deal. Paula, you missed all of the Royal trivia last week. That's what you get for missing a week. I can't believe that. I'm I am the person who always brings royal trivia into the show. We had it scheduled specifically for you and when you couldn't come last week, I'm like, "Oh man, was, she, she's going to kill us." I was in Canada, which is a commonwealth country. Say it ain't so, Paula. It is so. Wow, my head just exploded. I don't, I don't know why. But here's what we got. OG won while you were gone. So the score Two weeks ago, Len Penzo robbed you by uh, going $1 more than you. So uh, it's Len Penzo won. He's not here. OG is here, which means, uh, Shannon, you get to decide as our special guest. Do you want to go first, last, or in the middle? I'll go last. Perfect. Smart, smart man. Play. That's smart, smart play. play. Yep. You, you, this isn't Shannon's first rodeo. Price is right style. $1. Yes. $1. Right. <laughs> one, one newt. One newt. Here, that's right. Here we go. So the question uh, was this. There are three types of money in the wizarding world. Galleons, which are gold. Sickles, which are silver. And newts, which are bronze. If there's 17 sickles in a galleon, how many newts are in a sickle? And OG, you won last, which means you're going first. All right. So what are you doing? Look it up on your phone? <laughs> no, no, I didn't even have my phone. I'm just seeing you looking down. Because I, I was like, oh, this is a math problem. And then I realized it's not I a math problem. A, it's not a math it's problem. It's a shot in the dark problem. <laughs> it's it's, a, no, it's some, a, some ratio of one to 17 to something else. It's it's a dartboard problem, is what it is. Okay. I'm going to say um, if it's uh, one to 17, so uh, let's go uh, uh, 170 or to one. Yeah. Yeah, so if it takes 17 of the middle currency to make up one of the big currency, how many how many of the little currency does it take to make up the middle currency? Uh, yeah, I'll say I'll I'll, check, I'll just make it around. I'll say 200. It takes 200. So in other words, it takes 5 pennies to make a nickel and 2 nickels to make a dime. Is is what they're asking. So the first ratio for the big to the middle is 17. You're saying the middle to small is 200. Hey, I didn't stutter. I said 200. All right. <laughs> so let it be written. Paula, I don't want to say anything, but I think I, that's I, a... I, I'm guessing that 200 is just a little too high. My, 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 I'm, just, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> Paula Pant. I, I am going to go on a completely linear trajectory and guess 34. 34. Yeah. I'm guessing Shh. the ratios are 117, 34. Shannon. I'll say 51. 51. All right, here we go, Doug. Just, just randomly in the middle. <laughs> what is the answer? Hey there, money and story nerds. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and do I have a thrilling end to this story? 
Uh, of course, you know that Harry Potter is the biggest money-making fiction series of all time. So today's question revolves around money from that series. According to Rubius Hagrid, there are three types of currency in the wizarding world. Galleons, which are gold. Sickles, which are silver. And newts, which are bronze. Duh. If there are 17 sickles in a galleon, how many newts are in a sickle? The answer? Well, because there are 493 newts in a galleon, everybody knows that, Joe. That means there are exactly 29 newts in a sickle. Did you get it right? It's basic math. That means you're headed to Ravenclaw. Were you wrong like our entire round table today? Well, if you were, it's some slithering for all of you, my friends. See ya. And they're all over. Every wow, nobody won. Everybody loses. Yes. OG was closest. But he still, he was over, Shannon, which means we have no winner this week. So OG was closest. <laughs> At 200. I got that joke like an hour later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, That's a wrap. Um, that, that is a wrap. Paula, have you read the Harry Potters? I have, yeah. I've, I've read all seven books. Yeah. Shannon, you read the Harry Potters? I haven't read a single one. Nope. So Paula, they thank you for your support for that money making <laughs> franchise. Holy cow, are they pulling money in there? Hey guys, oh, uh, oh, looks like someone needs help. All three of those O's are sponsored by Bloom, Smart Simple 401k management. If you've got a 401k, do you know how frustrating it is deciding what to invest in without professional help? Now there's a better way to grow your 401k. Bloom with three O's is a simple, smart, and affordable way to grow your 401k. Go online. To, I, I'm doing this wrong, Paula. Len's not here, and I'm messing it up. Uh, do you want to fill in, or do you want OG to fill oh, in? Oh, no. No, don't, don't call on me for that one. No? All right. Uh, OG, this is all you. Go I still on, have some semblance of personal pride. <laughs> Go online to stackybenjamins.com forward slash Bloom. To find out more with... Bloom. You can simply connect your existing 401k in a few steps and sit back and relax while... Bloom performs an unbiased analysis of the funds in our in your account and chooses the best mix to meet your goals while minimizing hidden investment fees. In fact, what's cool is they will do that whether you use them or not. Bloom is so simple. In fact, the hardest part is remembering there's three O's. Head to stackybenjamins.com forward slash SB. No. Sorry. Stacking Bloom. Bloom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what everybody's thinking this whole segment is. Uh, Stackingbenjamins.com forward slash. Blue. And enter a promo code. That one I know. SB. For your first month free. First month free. How about that? And see the difference Bloom can make in your retirement. And uh, we're going to throw out the Bloom hotline today to our new friend, VJ. Say hi, VJ. Hello, Joe, OG, and Doug. How are you all? I love the show. Keep up the good work of teaching us nothing. I was shopping for a 20-year term life insurance policy, and after a little bit of research, I decided to go with a policy from Mass Mutual via a broker. The application is in the process, and the broker has already spent quite a bit of time on the application and on answering my questions. I recently came to know about HealthIQ.com, and the code I got from them was significantly lower than the one from Mass Mutual. The code from Mass Mutual for 1.5 million policy is about $1,100 a year, and the code from Savings Bank Life Insurance Company, also known as SBLI, via Health IQ, is about $850 a year. The difference is not significant, but it still comes up about uh, $10,000 over 20 years, assuming I invest uh, in an index fund returning 6%. I have two questions. One, would going with SBLI instead of Mass Mutual have any disadvantages? Online reviews of SBLI seem decent. Second, since the broker has spent a chunk of time in this process, would not getting a policy through him would be unfair. How should I handle the situation if I don't proceed with him? Thank you very much. I love this question. Somebody answers all your questions for you, then you shop online and find it for a bunch less money. So, OG, should he screw him over or not? I mean, <laughs> but seriously, that's a ton of money. I mean, he, he's, it's his point. It's a lot of money, but you can tell he feels a little guilty if he goes that way. What should he do? I would look at it from two perspectives. Why don't you ask the broker if he can offer the SBLI policy instead? If he's a broker and has, you know, access to a whole bunch of different providers, then, you know, maybe he can provide you with that option. The more complicated yet let you live with yourself answer is take the mass mutual one for the next year and uh, switch to the SBLI one in a year from now. 
And why is that? Well, I mean, because the guy, the, the insurance guy will get paid, you know, cause he did the work. And then in a year from now you requote it and say, Hey, I'm going to move it to SBLI. It's not eight fifteen anymore. It's $835 or whatever the increase is. You can run the quote on it and see what it would be for a year older. That maybe lets you sleep better at night or you just stop returning his phone calls. <laughs> We, we have an episode. Are, about you, this. are you talking about <laughs> ghost? Ghost, him. ghost, yeah, ghost, right. ghost your insurance guy. <laughs> and uh, maybe he'll just think that, you, <laughs> you know, fell off the face of the earth and he'll move on to the next deal. That's so bad. Paula, you, you know, the re- I was going to say the reality is, is if, if he has a substandard product, you know, what are you going to do? I like the idea, though, of being straight with him about saying, hey, I found this for a lot less money. Is there something we can do? Paula, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I like the idea of just going to him and being honest about the situation and saying, hey, first of all, I really want to thank you for all the time that you've spent. You've been really wonderful to work with, and uh, I appreciate everything that you've done. Here is the predicament that I'm in. And then explain the situation and say, is there a way that you can provide the same policy? Can you match this? If so, I would prefer to give you the business. And again, thank him profusely for all of the work he's done and give him the chance to still be your broker don't take on a more expensive policy just based out of feelings of guilt. Do you I ever mean, you'd say really be better off like sending him a check than you would getting into a more expensive policy? Well, that's true too, but you can't do that. Do you, yeah. Y- yeah. So it sounds like Paula, do you ever say the phrase, it's not you, it's me? It's <laughs> 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 exactly. <what> it is. <laughs> first- You're an awesome insurance broker. It's really cool. But listen, <laughs> I was doing some research online. You're a wonderful person. Yeah. Yeah. And your reviews didn't come back as favorably as the next person's. Shannon, you're the expert here, which is why I want to get I came to you last. What's uh, the right answer? Yeah. What's the right answer here, man? Because this is tough. I wouldn't say it's the right answer. I, I totally agree with you guys. I would, first of all, be honest with the guy who spent time with you. He, he really kind of spilled his uh, candy in the lobby, so to speak, from a salesman point of view because he did all of this free consulting if he ends up losing the business to this online quote. But uh, if he has a good relationship with this guy, go to him and first of all, explain the situation, tell him where he is, ask if there is a big difference in the policies. There could be a difference in the uh, in the two policies he's looking at. Those things have all sorts of bells and whistles. Make sure that he is comparing apples to apples. And you know, if not, I wouldn't blame the guy for going elsewhere because Everybody gets shopped, no matter what industry you're in or what product or service you're selling. Everyone is getting shopped, and it sounds like this fellow who did the free consulting hasn't. Uh, he he didn't close the sale, so to speak, before this guy went and found something elsewhere. I like that VJ is worried about it, though, Shannon. I mean, I really like that he's got the heart to think. I don't. That, yeah. that this guy helped me a lot because I've you know being a former financial advisor. I felt like sometimes people didn't care about that. And clearly you feel that way a lot of times. Right, exactly. <laughs> Obviously it's eating at him. He's giving these phone calls, right? He's wanting some advice. What do you think about OG's idea about the first year about keep it with the first year? So he gets a commission on the deal and maybe then he pays a little bit more that first year. And then the second year changes over. That would be the first time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be surprised if he goes that route. Yeah. He's going to ghost him. That's exactly what's going to happen. We all know what's well, going to happen. Well, doesn't, it doesn't sound like it. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can solve this. I think, you know, certainly bringing it to their attention because you're right. I think the biggest thing, Shannon, that you said there is that you might not be comparing apples to apples. And that happens a lot, right? Where there's, you know, that mass mutual policy, maybe that guy's got stuff for your kids in there or a spouse benefit or sure. some riders in there that you can access the policy if you get terminally ill or something like yep. that. There's all sorts of little things that are a value add mm-hmm. that maybe he didn't do a good enough job explaining. Here's why this is going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, but if it's not, and it's just apples to apples, I'm saving the 300 bucks. I know, Joe, you mentioned, I remember one time you were telling me that you bought a car this way, right? You emailed four different dealerships and said, here's what I'm looking for. Name your price. Give me your best deal. Right. Give me your best deal. And the person who gave you the best deal wasn't the closest person. But the big thing to your point too, though, is it wasn't always apples to apples there either. Right. So this idea about making sure that you're comparing apples to apples, maybe the, in this case, mass mutual policy has more stuff attached to it that the client needs to know about that maybe they want, right? Maybe it ends up being worth it. So 
Yeah, I like that solution. Thanks for the question, VJ. If you've got a question for the show, head to stackybenjamins.com and click on the top. You'll see a little thing that says, a little thing is the technical term, Paula, that we use here. Oh, uh, it's a tiny thing. It's a tiny thing. <laughs> this says, this says uh, questions for the show. Click on that. And it says all the different ways that you can uh, interface with us. That's going to do it for today, guys. Let's talk about what's going on where you live. Paula Pant, what's happening at that Afford Anything podcast and blog? There is so much happening. All right, so uh, released another Ask Paula episode where I answer audience questions. Launched the Afford Anything store. If you go to affordanything.com slash store, you can get three t-shirts that we have designed and 100% of the profits from these sales go to Charity Water. Our goal is to solely sponsor a water project in the year 2018, and that is going to require about $12,000, and I'm trying to do it through the sales of these shirts. So uh, that has launched. I've got a YouTube video up on youtube.com slash afford anything where I disclose all of the income and expenses from my rental properties. So all of that is going on, plus new blog posts. It's been busy, dude. I thought, I think that's nice that you're supporting <laughs> ch Charity Water. I do. I think that's awesome that you're doing that. I think it would have been funnier if with a straight face you said, 100% of the profits go directly into my pocket. <laughs> that would have been that would have been way better but charity water's good you too you know when you call an automated line and they always say uh hold on while we connect you to someone and in my head i always hear that sentence as hold on while i connect you with someone who cares right. <laughs> mr og what's happening with you man Oh, well, I just got back from a trip to the Great White North, which was uh, fantastic. I had every plan to play golf. I mean, it's the end of April, for crying out loud. It should be really nice and beautiful springtime up north, and it's not. So just got back from that. Were you in a Commonwealth country by chance? Well, no. Close. Southern, Southern Canada, Northern USA, otherwise known as Michigan. So, yep, got to visit. Interesting factoid, of course, about Michigan. If you drove straight south out of Detroit, what's the first country you run into? First country you run into? Yep. Uh, well, I mean, my guess would be the U.S., but since you're asking no, well, the question. <laughs> yes, of course, you're in the U.S. Yeah. in Detroit. I'm saying if you, it, what's the next country? What's the, the, the what, what's the first foreign country you run into if you go south out of Detroit, Paula? Well, Mexico then would be my first guess, but I suppose not, given the fact that you're asking this question. Yep. It's Canada. Canada. Because Ontario goes right underneath, like, I'm showing everybody what people from Michigan <laughs> yeah, this do. Is what it looks like, guys. <laughs> yes. Everybody on the podcast, you see this? It's kind of like this, and then and then Ontario comes yeah, in like this. Is, yeah. Exactly. Right. So that and uh, which, a whole bunch of cool stuff. Which, by the way, to that point, that Journey song, Don't Stop Believing," where they say, born and raised in South Detroit. Yeah, it, mean, it means she was born, born in Canada. In Canada. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they should have said born and raised in Canada in that song. But anyway, well, that's interesting. That's fun, OG. Glad you're uh, enjoying the- Back home safe. Yes, absolutely. Shannon, thanks a ton for hanging out with us, man. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for letting me come and hang out with you guys. And thanks for letting me mention how to avoid financial disaster. If any of your listeners want to go check it out, they can go to howtoavoidfinancialdisaster.com. And uh, they can pick up the book and I talk about the three biggest risks that everyone faces. And and one of them is that uh, most people assume nothing bad will happen to them. And we all know that's just not true. I love it when people say I'm a safe skier when we talk about disability insurance. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. And in the news just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Will Ferrell uh, was in a was in an SUV, got sideswiped. It, 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 yeah. It, yeah, it's often, Shannon, it's not about you. I mean, it's not about you. That's it's right. about the people around you. So. Yeah, good stuff. Where can they find the book again? They can go to howtoavoidfinancialdisaster.com. Awesome. And we'll link to that in our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. And if people want to get a hold of you, uh, how do they do that? They can give me a call down here. The call to our agency uh, would be 864-228-2122. Or they can simply send me a, an email, Shannon, at uh, howtoavoidfinancialdisaster.com. Well, great name. Fantastic. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Uh, Doug, what should we have learned today? Yeah, sure, I'll tell everybody what we learned. First, how about some advice from our new BFF, Shannon Harvey? Ask your agent what discounts are available when buying your insurance and also lean on them for good advice to navigate the insurance world. 
because they're the difference between buying online and maybe finding the right coverage for you. Second, still at that brick and mortar bank, there are lots of opportunities like N26 Online, making it easier and smoother for you to finish your banking and get on with your life. But the big lesson? Don't tell Joe's mom it's National Story Day. She'll start telling you about that time that Joe's lactose intolerant family went to Southeast Asia and got in some trenches with some Citadel people. I will say this though, the apple sure don't fall far from the tree. Know what I mean? Special thanks to Shannon Harvey for joining us. You'll find Shannon's book, How to Avoid Financial Disaster at howtoavoidfinancialdisaster.com. This show was created by Joe Salcihai, produced by Richie Rutter-Reese, and engineered by the amazing Steve Stewart. Online, visit us on Twitter at at SBenjamin'sCast or on our Facebook page. Shannon Cowan is our community manager and social media guru. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I'm pretty much the guy in charge of everything around here. Trust me, this well-oiled machine didn't get like this all by itself. SB Podcasts may receive payment on the show from sponsors and guests in the form of books, giveaway items, discounts, or other remuneration. There's no way you would take advice from these dorks, but like Joe's mom always says, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only, and before making any financial moves, consult with a real financial advisor. Welcome to the after show. Shannon, this is the part of the show that doesn't exist. What happens in the after show stays in the after stays show. Stays here. If you have to talk about it, which sometimes people do on social media, and I can't figure out why, you can talk about dessert, that we had dessert together. But I I saw this uh, the other day. These are some, uh, of course, there's a place in Austin, Texas, not that far from me, that's known for their crazy signs uh, outside of their restaurant. And they have these great uh, signs. But uh, this is a local Chevron station in Seattle's Wallingford neighborhood. And uh, they converted their local auto repair shop into a convenience store. And their outdoor signs, all of a sudden, they decided to have some fun with them. So the outdoor sign changed all the time. And we have signs like these. Ants are healthy because they have little antibodies. That's a great dad joke. Who's ever felt this way? Dear Naps, I'm sorry I was such a jerk to you as a kid. I feel that way all the time. I'm like, no, I want my childhood back so I can take another nap. Uh, The next one, is there ever a day that mattresses aren't on sale? Have you ever wondered that, Paula? (laughs) No, but I was going to say, Joe, you're self-employed. You can take a nap any time you want. I could if I was not. Being self-employed is not all it's cracked up to be for that. His his bed is literally... (laughs) three steps. Right? <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's like right behind. The it wall. is, it is way too far back there. Uh, if attacked by a mob of clowns, what do you do? Go for the juggler. Go for the juggler. <laughs> Shade for the win. How about this one? A child proof my house, but I didn't house proof my child. <laughs> the kids still get in. Ah. <laughs> Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. Mm. The first five days after the weekend are the hardest. (laughs) Ban pre-shredded cheese. (gasps) Make America great again. Bam! (laughs) (laughs) The past, the present. Sounds like a t-shirt Paula has. Yeah. It's uh there's a giant sign in downtown Vegas that says this. 
the past, present, and future walk into a bar? It was tense. It was tense. It was tense. Good one. <laughs> They're not going to make yardsticks any longer. Yeah. <laughs> Practice safe eating. Always use. Mastication. Hardcore. Is that right? <laughs> no. I wouldn't even know how to spell that on the side. <laughs> Practice safe eating. Always use condiments. Oh. Yeah. And then oh, there's another one that says, uh, if you think edu action is costly, try ignorance. I like that one. I checked into the hokey pokey clinic and and turn around. I turned myself around. I turned yeah. myself around. What happens if you get scared half to death twice? All right. Uh, this is my step. What happens? what happens if you get scared half to death twice? <laughs> That's just the whole side. What happens if, I don't know. Oh, we we, gotcha. we don't know. How about this one? Punchline. Yeah. I like these fill in the blanks. We change this midstream. Uh, this is my step ladder. I never knew. How? Mm, uh, I don't know. My real ladder. Oh. <laughs> I want to grow my own food, but I can't find bacon seeds. Mm. This one's popular around election time. I shouldn't say that, but if your car's running, I'm voting for it. Uh, <laughs> went to the Air and Space Museum, but there's no air in space. There was nothing there. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My wife said I never listened to her or some, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Frog parking only. All others will be towed. <laughs> so bad. I love that one. I took a picture of the sign that said that people, years ago. That's how I know it. People are wondering when the hell these are going to end. I just did a week's worth of cardio after walking. We've all had this happen into a spider web. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, on that horrible one, we're going to end it. Unless you guys got, so you got some good signs. Anybody got some other good signs you know of? Sometimes I tuck my knees to my chest and lean forward, but that's just how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's what I get for living with a third and a fifth grader. There it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Same, and dad, dad always wins joke. that one. Right. Uh, I've got another one in downtown Vegas that says, in my defense, I was left unattended. Uh, 